I want to reach out and do another one of these drive videos. I'll do a better video later. I just want to do something brief uh, for the channel. I want to talk to the ladies that are viewers and subscribers, and thank you very much for being viewers, members, and subscribers to RP Thor. Um, if you come to this space and you like some of the things you hear, I, I understand. And I want to talk about a really hard subject because I've talked about women's sexual market value and I want to say some hard things to you and it's not intended to hurt your feelings but it will make it uncomfortable it's not it it just is what it is and I'm not particularly picking on any individual of course not that wouldn't be what I do but I would point out the generalities and that is sexual market value in a woman is easy to calculate and it is calculated from the male perspective not the female perspective it has to be sexual market value is a simple rating that men have used for a long time she's a one she's a ten in my mind there's no tens unless you're sleeping with her so <laughs> but anyway ones through tens right a simple rating system and it's kind of done in such a fashion because who are the buyers well guys want to buy some women want to sell at least it's set up like a marketplace so who sets the price in the marketplace the demand does right so if it's more valuable and more scarce the demand goes up the price would go up the number would go up but that's not the case these days men set that scale that's how men have a preference and they shouldn't be guilty for their preferences and a lot of their preferences are actually quite instinctual and inbuilt into their firmware just as women's are what I want to make very clear is that human value does not equate to sexual market value in any way shape or form it's not what anybody says however if you engage in a casual conversation or a panel show debate and you're speaking with people that don't have much experience when a lady hears sexual market value all she hears is my human value and it's really strange because that's not what we're talking about and it might be the fault of the hosts and people that are communicating that aren't explaining that thoroughly but I kind of doubt it I think they're conditioned to think this way and since I'm talking about sexual market value you know there's also something called relationship market value uh, now that's different that's the long-term values that stand outside of sex there is a value to having a relationship that stands alone outside of sex let me back that up it stands apart not alone it's coupled anything that stands alone would not really be a true friendship it'd be like having a girlfriend that's it or like having an acquaintance that you're very very familiar with it wouldn't be any more of a relationship than that I don't care how you define it it can't be but that's very different and relationship market value definitely has some something to do with a person a person's core and hence their value as a being as a whole human being so I could see where people would kind of conflate the two and think that's part of their value as a human being but in this space we like to use sexual market value because it really describes what a woman has to vow offer when you first meet it's sexual market value it's your looks it's your demeanor and it's your uh, openness to communicate and offer any sort of indicator of interest and that kind of is it there I know that the ladies as they age have a real hard time coming to grips with it particularly in their late 30s 40s and 50s it gets worse because in your 20s you have that intrinsic value that's built in and it just doesn't seem like that's what's going on but it is what's going on you have this high high standard of value so you can charge more essentially when you age out of that you don't have that value at all so you're left with what you can offer sexually to begin with and I have these conversations with older gals that are struggling on the dating market 
and asking for some, how do I make myself, there's no men. Well, there's plenty of men. And there's men that they would like to partner with, but they go about it in exactly the opposite way that they should. <laughs> Somebody's going to get a hold of this and they'll really understand it and they'll be able to speak better than me. And they'll be able to really communicate this to the ladies and they'll increase their success. There is so many single ladies out there right now that are basically aged out of their prime years, you know, somewhere in their late 30s to late, you know, in right up into 60 years old. Um, this doesn't happen to men. This happens to women because men, as they age, they acquire experience, problem-solving skills, which is their primary agency, and their sexual uh, market value is really kind of secondary to that in the long run for relationship. So the ladies, you'll ask the question, what do you bring to the table initially when you're looking for a man and say you're over 50? You're going to have to bring your sexual energy. I don't know how to say it any kinder than that. Sexual energy, willingness to really use all your years of experience sexually to really rock that guy's boat and yet still have deference and sexual submission and ability to sense what he likes, what he doesn't like. You're going to have to have that all within his reach. I'm not saying you're going to do it immediately or even on the first date. But it has to be within reach to keep his interest long enough for you to express the values that you offer or bring to the table for a relationship. Unfortunately, this is usually opposite for gals that have lived that long because they still have that, they have that sense, all of us do, I feel just like I did when I was young. So I have all this value. So what I'm going to do differently now and they're up against the uphill battle, is I'm going to hold out for that guy that's even better than what I've experienced before. You know, I know what I want better than I do before. It's not really true, gals. That is completely not true. Your hormone system is failing. And with your failing hormone system, you actually don't have the agency that you had before in, in, in very little very, very little ways do you have it. The failing hormone system with an aging female is so detrimental to her emotions, her abilities to make decisions over time. It's really quite astonishing to watch a woman lose her hormones naturally. And this is the entire gamut of balanced hormones. I've seen it because I've worked with women that stay in shape and they keep their hormones together right into their 60s. They don't have these issues. And then I counsel the gals that are having these issues. You don't even have that. And so even your desire, you have this desire for companionship, but you don't have the ability to offer anything to a man outside of just quick sex. And you need to offer more. So what a lot of gals will do when I ask them what their values are, well, I own a business, I've worked hard, I'm a CEO, uh, I can, I can, I am emotionally sound, which is the furthest thing from the truth. And, uh, I can be, you know, the emotional rock if a guy needs it. No guy needs a woman who's an emotional rock. I'll tell you that right now. And I've heard it from gals that say, oh, well, I'll be his spiritual, you know, guide. Guys don't need a spiritual guide. They need a guide for sex, but they don't need that. They don't want that. That's not their preference. Um, and they're not looking for a mother. And a lot of the gals will say, well, I, I'm nurturing and mothering. You know, that's kind of what guys will want at that, when gals get older. But everything I mentioned prior to that, the job, the success, uh, they start mentioning the hobbies that they have as a value to a man in the relationship. They start talking about their past accomplishments and education. And... Those are all things that men offer to women. That is not what should be offered to a man for a relationship. And that's why all the guys will run screaming from you. Yeah, they'll stay for a little bit of sex, but they're going to leave. And if you're an older gal, you're going to be kind of stuck and frustrated because no guys your age are going to date you. You might get some younger guys that want to play house for a minute, but they don't stick around. 
uh, I can see the frustration on some of my clients face on this and to tell them that they have to really consider what they bring to the table outside of sex however when they first start dating they better bring their a game when it comes to sex if they want the guy to even think about sticking around and I've seen a couple of the gals do extremely well when they go through these thoughts and kind of realize that companionship and finding someone to be with is important to them. It sounds like what I'm telling them is to dumb themselves down and reduce themselves in life, but that's not what I'm doing. What I'm actually doing is telling them to elevate their relationship market value. I'll just give you a hint because really the rest of the values that can be found are found in my lecture course, which you know I offer on the Gumroad, but that's the long-term relationship principles of success is those values right there and those things that are offered in there in values not the added liabilities most women as they age offer far too many liabilities for a man way too many to outweigh looking for a younger woman with less and they have very little in the way of the added values if you look at the added values they're very simple and when you read them or hear them you'll think you have them in spades but it's likely that you don't uh, I'll just do one. How many gals out there are the influencer or the influencer? 100% when I ask this question, when I say influenced or influencer, every woman thinks she's the influencer of her group. Yet when I, I walk her through scenarios with her friends and she tells me stories, that is not the case. Whatever the group think is, is what she does for the most part. The ones that are actually have influencing capacity, generally those girls are in very happy relationships, not running around single. Uh, also, a really big one, an added value, is to anticipate your mate's needs. Even if you're dating, anticipating a need. If you know that your mate needs a certain thing at a certain time and you've gone out of your way to make sure that happens, Little do you realize that right there goes a long way to having him keep you around. Yeah, it could be very simple. You like a certain shirt on a certain day and you happen to be spending the weekend there and you get it all cleaned and ready or you surprise him with it. Those are the kind of things that earn value with a man, you know. It's not the fact that you owned your business for years and years and you can do things. Oh, I'll tell you another thing. Being very organized in your own life as far as your personal care is super important to guy. When I say personal care, what could that be? Okay, that means you take care of your hair, you take care of your skin, you take care of your weight. It's going to be a hard one for a lot of them to swallow because as you age, your metabolism slows. Now... Loss of hormones is going to make that extremely difficult. And you're going to get a lot of folks that say, Oh, uh, you know, you're one of those guys that likes a woman to shave and do all these things. I don't really care about that. It's really the personal hygiene, the ability to take care in your appearance. I don't care about all that as long as you're not growing a beard. But if you grow a beard, that's not my thing. You dress nice. You have a modicum of modesty. You're not the kind of woman that engages in a conversation where you're constantly saying, yeah, but, or what you actually are saying is this. Those are really combative forms of communication, and if you've lived in a masculine world, you know you're going to have to do that. And if you're in your late 40s or 50s and you would like to start dating, I hate to say it, but you're going to have to learn deference. If you can learn deference to the man you're dating, he's going to stick around. Because that's so rare a quality that he'll honor it. And it's kind of your best hope. And unfortunately for you, there's a lot of guys that are a little older than you in your 50s and 60s. And they haven't taken care of themselves. All they have is status and money. But you know what they're looking for? <laughs> they're looking for a nursemaid. <laughs> so if you have a lot of nursing and nesting qualities and mothering qualities and you want to do that for an old bastard, 
be my guest, but I suspect a lot of women will not want that. And, you know, I do have a couple of clients that are older, and my advice to them is, you know, you need to burn the candle at both ends right up until the end. You need to do the same damn thing. Take care of your body, you know. If you're fat, lose the fat. Take care of your skin, you know. Guys, I got the skin of an old 60-year-old, but I still use product, and I try to keep it trim and clean every freaking day. Uh, so you can do that too. So ladies, let's just sum it up. You really need to come up with values that you can express in a relationship. Maybe take a look at principles of a long-term relationship and realize that as you get older, you tend to throw out a lot more shit tests on guys right up front when you should really be throwing out your sexual energy. And that doesn't mean be a slut. It means throw out your feminine energy and then you cap it with a little bit of sexuality and that, that'll drive a guy wild. And if you hold on to it too long, I mean, your competition is 30 years younger, basically. And they're willing to put up with all the shit. I mean, you can say, throw your hands up and say, oh, well, I'll just wait till the next guy's there. Okay, be alone. Um, no problem, man. Have fun with it. You got a mirror, right? You got a mirror and batteries? Good deal. You'll be all right. But if you do want to spend some time with somebody, it doesn't mean you have to move in. It doesn't mean you have to have, you know, a marriage. But if that's your goal, you're going to have to do things a lot different. You're going to have to expose yourself to these men. You're going to have to learn how to have deference, no matter how old you are, no matter how successful you've been, no matter how masculine you have adopted in your business life or education life none of that matters in attraction for a man he'll honor it only after you defer to him and you offer him value in in his life that's what a man's looking for he's looking for a value exchange he will offer value to you in the form of status money provisioning protection and sex and you'll offer him sexual access and value to enhance his status in his uh, and his ability to be successful in life so it's a value exchange that can be very beautiful but you know coming to grips with that after looking at online for dates where you know look men and women today they got a long way to go to suck it up and even come close to you know our grandparents what they did you know they understood that our time here is very limited and sometimes it's better to be with somebody and enjoy their company you know I talked the other day about passions and that some people just don't have a passion look I guarantee if you're around somebody long enough and they're pleasant enough and you get along great you're going to develop some sort of feelings for them it's going to happen and it could turn into passion. So, you know, don't look the other way all the time because you're in a hurry, you know, be open to different things and, and keep trying. I feel for you. It's really hard being a bit older as a woman and trying to date where it's real easy being an older man and trying to date. It's real easy. Because you have all the things that the girls actually do. So, with that, scope.